Till now, I mostly used OLED displays to output text out of my Arduino projects. Time to look at other options out there. This LCD1602 module is one of the alternatives. Let's have a look at it. So here is the LCD display. LCD stands for Liquid Crystal Display. The one here is mainly used to display text in 16 columns and 2 rows, thus the name LCD1602. The module has 16 pins, which may be a bit intimidating for beginners, but you would later see that this is not as complex as it seems. Liquid Crystal Display technology works by blocking light. LCD is made of two pieces of polarized glass that contain a liquid crystal material between them. A backlight creates light that passes through the first glass panel. At the same time, electrical current causes the liquid crystal molecules to align to allow varying levels of light to pass through to the second glass panel and create image that you see. Before we can start to work with the display, we need to solder on some pins. Done. Not the best work ever, but it will do. Now let's look at the pins. First two are ground and VCC pins to power the module. Then you have a contrast pin, where 0 volts on that pin gives max contrast, while 5 volts gives minimum contrast. We will be controlling that input voltage with potentiometer. Next is register select pin, followed by read write pin. Then we have enable pin to enable LCD module and finally eight data pins. The last two pins is anode and cathode of the backlight LED. I mentioned that the connectivity may not be as difficult as it originally seemed. When using all eight data pins we are passing information to the module one byte at a time. But if you connect just last four data pins then data transfer is performed half byte at a time. The module works perfectly well and we can leave the other four data pins not connected, simplifying connectivity. Less cables, less hassle. So with all this in mind, let's connect the module to Arduino. Starting with ground and VCC going to Arduino ground and 5 volt pins. Then we introduce potentiometer, which will allow us to send voltage varying from 0 to 5 volts to contrast pin. Register select pin goes to Arduino digital pin D2. We ground the read-write pin to enable writing to the module. We connect enable pin to digital pin D3. Data pins D4 through D7 go to Arduino digital pins D6 through D9. Anode or the backlight LED goes to Arduino 5 volt pin through current limiting resistor. And cathode goes to ground. Let's connect the real thing. Starting with ground, then VCC, Contrast pin, register select, read write, enable, and data pins. Finishing with backlight anode through 220 ohm resistor. and backlight cathode. After powering the Arduino, the backlight LED is on, but we see nothing on the screen even though I have sent some text to it. So when I turn the potentiometer, text gradually becomes visible. With contracts turned to the max, you also see the outline of all 32 character positions. Now to the code. We will be using standard liquid crystal library. It exists in Arduino IDE by default and does not have to be installed separately. You can find a handful of examples by going in Arduino IDE to File, Examples, Liquid Crystal. Then we declare pins through which module is connected and having that in place we can declare the display itself. Now let's look at the bunch of commands this library makes available to us and write some code example. First command is LCD set cursor command. It sets the location at which subsequent text written to the LCD will be displayed. In this example, 
we position the cursor in the first row and first column. The next command is the print command, used to output string to the LCD starting at the cursor position. In this case we write hello world. After waiting for a bit, we change the cursor position to the second row and first column and yet again we output the same string. Again we wait for 2 seconds and use LCD clear method to clear the display. Let's see the whole sequence again. The next feature we'll talk about is LCD blink method. It is used to blink a block style cursor at the current cursor position. To demonstrate how it works, we need to declare a string. In loop function we execute blink method and then we have a for loop that is executed as many times as there are characters in the string, printing one character with each execution. With the cursor blinking you have an impression that the text is typed in real time. When the whole text is output to LCD we run the no blink method which turns off cursor blinking. After 3 seconds we again make a use of LCD clear command to clear the LCD. Let's see the whole sequence again. Moving to auto scroll method, which moves all the text one space to the left each time a letter is added. In this example, we also have to declare the string to scroll. In loop function, we have a for loop which is going to write the string to the screen one character at a time. Then we position the cursor in the last column of the second row when we execute the auto scroll method and then have another for loop to write the string again at the current position, you would see that with each character type the whole content of the screen is moved one space to the left. After the text is scrolled out, you can run LCD no auto scroll command and this would turn off auto scrolling. Let's see this again. If you want to have more control over scrolling, you can use LCD scroll display left and LCD scroll display right methods. They scroll the content of the display, text and cursor, one space to the left or right. In this example, we output the text inside the setup function and in the loop function, we have two for loops. The first one executes LCD scroll display left 13 times, which scrolls the whole text 13 positions to the left. And then, second for loop executes LCD scroll display right 13 times, and this way scrolling the whole text 13 positions to the right, so it ends in the original position. Let's see the sequence again. When working with LCD display, you are not limited to just existing alphanumeric characters. You can also define your own ones. This can be done using LCD create car method. First you have to come up with a character design, like this bot here. The character size is 5 by 8 pixels and you need binary representation of it. Then it can be transferred into a binary table that can be later used in Arduino code. Over to code example. In this setup function, we use LCD create car method, referencing the table containing custom character definition and assigning the index to that character. In this case, the index is a zero. Then in main loop, we position the cursor in the top row, first column, and then we use LCD write command to output custom character that has an index zero. LCD write is the method to output a single character to LCD. The LCD print function we used previously was used to output the whole string. Let's also, after waiting for a bit, have two nested for loops which will output our bot 32 times, filling the whole screen. Perfect! You may also go and create more complex pixel arts that comprises of multiple custom characters. Like in this example where we create a large smiley. It comprises of six custom characters. This is the table representing the first character, and here are the other five. Now the code looks similar. In the setup function, we define characters 
with indexes from 0 to 5. And in the main code, we position the cursor in the first row, first column, output top three characters, and then move the cursor to second row, first column, and output bottom three characters. It is not even close to the quality of pixel arts you can do on OLED displays, but there again, this type of display is not meant for displaying graphics. We still have few methods left to discuss, so let's create a sample program that will use all remaining methods we have not discussed yet. The first method is LCD right to left. It sets the direction for text written to the LCD, so it is output right to left, where the default direction is left to right. Let's position the cursor in the middle of the top row and output the sample text. You probably ask yourself, what the hell is tfel? As you can see, the text is written in reverse and the word left is shown on the LCD. The LCD left to right method restores the default direction of text output. So let's position the cursor in the middle of the bottom row and restore the default text output direction and output the sample text. Now let's use LCD blink method again to see what is the current cursor position. LCD home method positions the cursor in the upper left corner of the LCD. So let's run it. Great, it works. The next method is LCD no display. It turns off the LCD display without losing the text currently shown on it. After we run it, we can turn the display back on with LCD display method. This wraps up this video. If you think we covered everything there is to know about LCD1602 displays and Arduino, you'd be wrong. There is not much more as far as this particular module is concerned, but you can get LCD1602 module with attached I2C serial interface. This enables us to control the LCD display with just two pins. This, however, requires a different library and will be a topic of a completely new video. As always, like, share my videos and subscribe if you have not done so. Also, check my Patreon website. In few days I'll post there the second LCD1602 video ahead of official release date. I'll see you guys and girls in my next video. Bye.